So I just saw the newest horror film, Wish Upon, and I have to say, it's one of the best theatrical experiences I've had in 2017 so far. I mean, it was so fun to the point where, I mean, despite me really finding this film to be like one huge heap of trash, that I sat back and enjoyed how each scene unfolded into what became this huge mess of a film. After the ending happened where it just wrapped up the entire film in this nice little messy bow, like Wish Upon could potentially be like one of those movies where it's so bad that it's a good type of thing, where I don't think it's gonna be looked at as a horror film, but more or less a comedy. And I have to admit, I laughed my ass off about a good seven or eight times due to the instantaneous decisions that some of the characters make, the acting that it has to offer, or even the watered down Final Destination deaths that gave it that PG-13 rating. I walked out of the theater with one of the biggest dumb smiles on my face and I instantly went to the internet to see if anybody else shared my thoughts on you know it looking at like a comedy more than horror and sure enough like a good amount of people did I mean like there's a couple people here and there that just ripped this movie apart in more of a serious manner which I totally get it's their review and everything but then a thought occurred to me that maybe some of the most vile and horrible pieces of film really like surprisingly need to happen in the world of cinema to give it that kind of a good balance and weirdly enough we actually need bad movies. And in this video, I'll be discussing bad cinema and why us, the audience, need to watch bad films. Starting off with the first reason, which is differentiating between a good film and a bad film. There's people all over the world who have a list of some of their favorite and most hated pieces of cinema, and partially that comes with their particular tastes. But either way, all of us have some sort of good and bad in every form of entertainment. And as an audience, we know what we like and what we don't like. Now apply that to a film that you just watched. Now, whether you liked it or you loved it, you have legitimate reasons as to why you believe that it's a good film. That same notion also applies to a film that you either don't like or you hate it, but upon you watching all these movies, you gain a better idea of what really makes a good film or not. Which again, the viewer's taste applies to this whole idea, because the idea is our balance of what we perceive as good cinema or bad cinema. For any of us who are aspired filmmakers that upon watching these bad movies, we know what not to do when we go out and make a film. And for all the good films that we have watched, we know what makes good stories, characters, acting, and all these things that makes up good cinema, we want to put those in our upcoming films. But for any of those people who don't want to be in that category of a filmmaker who just purely watch it for entertainment, then you know what makes you excited or not. Now the second reason being is the word of mouth. Now let's say you have a group of friends and you watch a trailer to a film that you may have some interest in but you're a little hesitant on actually going out there and spending money on this particular film. You have the options of either listening or reading a review in which that's kind of the whole reason why we're here in the first place is to explain the reasons why we like or not like a film. Turns out that your most trusted reviewer who calls this particular film that you're interested one of the worst movies of the year I wanted to kill myself upon watching it but you want a little bit more insight as to why this person views that way. Now you and your group of friends go, you guys watch the movie, and it turns out you guys hate it just as much as your go-to reviewer. So all the people around you from yourself to your friends who may be curious about that film that you just saw, they're asking the question, well, how's the film? I'm kind of interested in seeing it. And then you give your explanations as to why you find it to be a piece of shit film, along with your friends who are telling the same thing to people but outside of the friend group. Then it's up to that person to make that decision whether or not they should go out and see the film or not. Because just like all the films out there, no one is forcing you to watch these. Sometimes sacrifices have to happen in order to pass down the line of what makes that particular film so bad. Now, if you're that type of person who doesn't listen to anybody and you go out and watch the film anyway, that falls on you. I mean, but hey, maybe you'll learn something about filmmaking, which kind of harkens back to my first reason, kinda. Now, the third reason is the balance of good films and bad films. Yes, we all like to watch great films, whether it be action adventure, comedy, drama, horror, you name it, because there's always a great film in every genre. But also imagine a world where there's just good films, but no bad films. I mean, sounds pretty nice, right? But if, from my point of view, that kind of sounds like an extremely boring place to live. I believe we need those bad films because just like my first reason, we need those bad films in order to understand of what really makes the good so great. It sounds like a really, really weird philosophy, but also watching a bad film can help you appreciate the good films and helps you break them down further. Because let's say like you purely watch good films, which is cool. I mean, you have a better understanding of what makes filmmaking or what it is. But where does the bad come into play? Nothing in the world of cinema is perfect, and as an audience, we must be able to pinpoint some of the things that bugs us whenever we watch a film. Which absolutely isn't my point, but my point is like, we need the bad in order to appreciate what's good out there. And imagine a world where there's just bad films and no good films whatsoever. It kind of sounds like an absolute dog shit hell of a place to live in, 
but thank goodness that will never happen. Now my fourth reason is the strange feeling of entertainment in these bad films. Believe it or not, there are films out there, just like a guilty pleasure, that you know that it's bad, but you can't help but watch it. It's one of those things where you just know it's so bad, but you appreciate the art form of what goes behind it. It's ultimately triggering that little piece of entertainment part of your brain. One of the newest examples for me is Wish Upon because it's absolutely one of the worst films of the year so far, but because of those watered down PG-13 moments of the film, I can't help but appreciate it. There are particular deaths in the film that gloss over the fact that a character got their neck snapped or something went through their head, which they show, but not the whole entire thing. Also appreciating the fact that how these people die doesn't fall down to coincidence just like how Final Destination is, but how stupid they can really be. One of the deaths has someone putting their hand in the garbage disposal while reaching for some vegetables that got clogged in there, where stupidly enough, they have a disposal switch right next to where their leg is, and you laugh at the fact that there's no no way that home interior design can actually be that way, yet you appreciate it for the film on how stupid it can really be. Like who absolutely puts the switch there, like nobody. Which is why the entertainment part of our brain turns on because, well, at least for me, because I know there's some form of entertainment in here. Now am I saying that you should go out there and go see Wish Upon as soon as possible? I mean, no. In fact, I don't think it's worth seeing in theaters whatsoever. But if you go into this film expecting it to rip it into shreds along with a group of friends that has the same objective as you, then I promise you, you guys will have a great time. But alcohol needs to be involved. Don't drink and drive, kids. But that's more or less my take on how I perceive bad films and how they can benefit the world of cinema. But I also want to know how you guys perceive bad films. We can have that discussion down below. Also, don't forget to follow me on all social media such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I'm going to leave all the links in the description box down below. If you like the video, like the video, comment so we can have that discussion, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, guys, may the force be with you. <laughs>